الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه شهد ان لا اله الا الله وان محمدا عبده ورسوله my dear friend, brothers and friends assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to you on this day and um, i would like to continue the topic of the mahdi which is an important topic um, because it forms part of um, you know some key or core beliefs within many muslims so uh, understanding of the deen of islam and so i want to expose or explore more of this topic and hopefully increase your understanding so <clears throat> yeah just to recap in the previous uh, discussion previous episode the um, conclusion that i drew from the quran and uh, we looked at the verse from the quran where allah says that he will appoint leaders who will guide people leaders who will guide and of course the person who will guide is the hadi hadi that comes from the hidayah and no person can be a hadi unless he is mahdi so in other words no person can be a guide of people without him or herself being guided by the almighty creator of the universe allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we drew the conclusion in the previous episode that the quran clearly um sets out that leaders who are guided or who will guide people are to be appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the word that the Quran uses is the word imam a imma so the a imma in the context of that particular verse and let me just show you that verse just for a matter of uh, completeness this is the verse I'm referring to. It's uh, Surah 21, verse 73. And the verse says, And we made them leaders, guiding Yahduna bi amrina, men by our command. And we sent them inspiration to do good deeds, to institute adherence, and to promote moral refinement. And they constantly serve us and us alone. So this is the famous chapter that we refer to in this discussion or the famous uh, verse so the conclusion i drew in the previous episode was that imamun mahdiyun a guided imam is something promised in the quran to humanity a guided imam imamun mahdiyun is something which is a gift from allah to the world imamun mahdiyun that is a guided imam so in other words the quran refers to imams in the plural in the context of this chapter and you can go and read chapter 21 the, the verse is building up to verse 73 and what you will find is that uh, this chapter in fact shows or relates the stories of great prophets of the past of leaders of the past whether it is you know isa and musa and um, ibrahim and all of these great prophets and even uh, job um. and so these are all men of the past that are called to mind by the Quran and who are raised up as an example of past leaders a imma al imma a imma mahdi yun imams that were guided right and so the sense of an imamun mahdiyun is not there is a an abstract sense of the 
of an imamun mahdiyun the abstract concept of a leader that is guided by god and that guides humanity is enshrined, enshrined in the holy text it's enshrined in the quran it's there we can't dispute the idea of an imamun mahdiyun an imam that is guided by allah and that guides people so then the big question then arises and this is the question that was posed to me is how does this fit in with the imamun imam mahdi not now imamun mahdi a guided imam but al imam al mahdi the mahdi the guided imam and this is obviously a particular is you know it's not referring to the general abstract in the general abstract of the sense of a guided leader whom we can find plenty of examples of in fact i will come to this but a thought that i want to suggest to you is that you know in the aqida of the zaidi zaidia fiqh or in the zaidi uh, basic um, aqida the imam the imam is not solitary and singular at any given time so if you if you study the muzakiratul firaq the book of mutawalli then you will find that according to zaidi uh, uh, aqida or core beliefs the concept of imamat is compulsory the idea of a rightly guided imam a, an imam to be identified and to be recognized by people as suitable for leading the community that idea is a core belief of course it is also a core belief in the ithna ashari or the imami school of thought but there it is it is confined to 12 So the difference between the Zaidi and the Imami schools, which are both Mu'tazila schools, they are both rationalist schools. Let me just remind you there. In other words, they set their apart from the Ahli Sunnah in the sense that they adopt rational, logical reasoning as a basis to arriving at sound knowledge and understanding. So both the Zaidi and the Imami both adopt the idea of the compulsory nature of an Imam. So there cannot be a Muslim community without an Imam. Based on this verse, based on on the verse that we have shown here, that Imamat, the fact that there has to be a rightly guided Imam is compulsory. It's not. It's not a matter of luxury. It's not a sunnat. It's not a Uh, uh, super irrigatory as they say you know uh, uh, optional extra to islam it is the f- the fact or the requirement for muslim for the mu'minin to identify or to arrive at a leader is compulsory in fact it is a prerequisite you cannot you cannot have a community without an imam it is a requirement of being an a muslim or a, a community of believers of mu'minin that is at least according to the ithna shari the 12 uh, shia and the uh, zaidi right and so the concept of imamat is non-negotiable non-negotiable and you know what to anyone who takes the view that the shafi'i mazhab says that any sana or any person who is a corrupt person can lead the muslim community that is conceding allah's world to a sana and how can we concede the world to a sana is that not conceding the might and the supremacy of allah you know think about it so i personally embrace and endorse the idea of the need for any community 
of Mu'mineen to hasten to identify this most suitable person there to serve as the Imam or the rightly guided leader. Right, so Imamun Mahdiyun is people must attempt to identify an Imam that is on guidance. Person that is not corrupt, that is not flaunting the will of Allah, that is not uh, acting with fahsha and with munkar and with bari, with all these evil, ugly behaviors and injustices and oppressiveness and all these. These traits must be absent when we look at the Imamun Mahdiyun, an Imam that is guided. Right, and that, as I said, is is a is a core principle within the Mu'tazila, within the Zaidi, within the Jafari, within the Imami. The family of the Prophet, in fact, upheld this principle. It is only when you hate a, a guided Imam that you will hate Imamat. It is only if you wish the scoundrels to rule that you will dislike the concept of Imamat. So anyone who dislikes the concept of Imamat is dangerous. You cannot dislike this concept. This concept is a core essential idea. It's like saying you have a household, you have a family, you have five or six children. Right? Listen to this now. You have a family of five or six children, you have your wife, you have your car, and you appoint a caretaker over your house, a known thief, and a known child molester. Come on. Will you do that to the Muslim Ummah, to the, to the community of Muslims? Will you put a, a known thief, a drunkard, a womanizer, an oppressive person in charge of your business? Of your family? Don't, please, don't then recommend that Allah should appoint a drunkard and a thief and a murderer in charge of his people, in charge of the Mu'minin. So the concept of Imamat is non-negotiable. Right, and if you want to negotiate around that, then uh, I'm 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 worried about him. I'm afraid for you. Then we're not disputing the idea of the concept of imamat. What we are trying to understand is the concept of, and also I think by now you should agree with me. The, the concept of an imamun mahdiyun, of an imam that is rightly guided, that is not corrupt, that rules by Allah, that uh, complies with these requirements. Um, in other words, that are uh, guided by the, by the commands of Allah, that institute adherence, that promote moral refinement, that serve Allah and Allah alone, that don't fear human beings and uh, uh, ordinary people. That is the concept of an imamun mahdiyun. And that is I think we can we can safely agree and assume that that is a concept that the Quran is putting forward. But I want to take it now to the next level, to the level of Al Imam, Al Mahdi, the Imam Mahdi. Who is he? Who is this? The Al Imam Mahdi. So, in other words, not the abstract Imam Al Mahdi, the Imam that is rightly guided, which can be. Many, I mean, I, 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 I would, my humble opinion, eh? and I um, mean, don't, don't, don't judge me or don't tell me, yeah, now I'm finished with you. You're talking all of nonsense. My humble opinion, my humble opinion is that we have a imam Mahdi, we have Imam and Mahdi, we have them. They are there. If you care to pay attention, you'll see them. Who are the people ruling by Allah's will that institute? justice that institute moral refinement who are they we're not looking for angels people we're looking for regular people and if you go around the world and you see where those people have established communities where people are instituting moral refinement where they are guiding other men by what allah has revealed where they promote adherence to what is good and what is right you will be able to find Imams, even in your own circles. You have to go and look for them. They are the people that have founded institutions, systems of government, countries, where they have done the required demands from Allah. And it's not 
a prerequisite that the people should all abide by them. If the people are not listening to them and they are preaching, that is enough. Right. So, um, you know, if 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 um, if the if the previous premier of Pakistan, um, Imran Khan, Imran Khan, if he if he's guided people by what Allah has revealed, and he has instituted um, adherence, and he has promoted moral refinement, and he has um, uh, stayed away from, you know, sins and evils. What is wrong with declaring him as an Imam al Mahdi, the leader of the of the um, Palestinians in Gaza? If he is doing what is good, righteous, leading the people against the enemy, instituting what is just and righteous, what is wrong with him being Imam al Mahdi? Right? If the leader of the um, of Egypt, say Morsi, you know, I'm, I'm going back now to 20, what, 12 or something, say it, Muhammad Morsi, if he was guiding people by it, then he is Imam al Mahdi. You don't have to find angels and, you know, and it doesn't mean you have to be perfect. Nobody's perfect. And nobody shares the full ideological unanimity with Islam also. And I'm prepared, and you can judge me for this, but I'm prepared to say if you can find a good Christian leader that is leading his people, that is righteous, and Allah knows perfectly who is righteous, he could be a righteous leader. Because you just have to retranslate the word Imam to leader. If you have a righteous leader, a leader that is guided, then he is a righteous leader. Imam al Mahdi. But I think. Let's move on from the idea of Imam al-Mahdi unto al-Imam Mahdi. Now, you know, I, 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 I endorse the concept of the Imam Mahdi, which is prophesied in many a hadith and in pro previous books. Or in and yes, you're going to tell me, but Anwar, you don't except hadiths. I always say that I do not abandon hadith, but hadith requires corroboration. Hadith requires corroboration, either from the Quran or from any rational empirical proof. Right? Rational empirical proof or Quran. Those are the things that we require to confirm a hadith. And I'm going to offer you a rational um, co uh, corroboration to these hadith. And the rational corroboration is the following. Look at this verse. Surah 28, verse 5. وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّ مُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْعُرْضِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةً وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ الْوَارِثِينَ Right, we have the verse here. We have the nas, we have the text. This is our input data here. We wished to be gracious to those who were being depressed in the land and to make them leaders in faith and make them heirs. Just stand still here. Reflect. Reflect on this. We wished to be gracious we wish to be favorable or to favor them or to give them the benefit, to benefit those, namunna, to those who were being depressed or oppressed in the land, those who were suppressed, who were marginalized, and to make them leaders and make them heirs. The concept in the Quran is that the oppressed will win the day eventually. The prophecy of the Quran, the prediction of the Quran, the eschatology of the Quran is that the oppressed will end up ruling. The oppressed will end up ruling. The oppressor 
will be defeated. Very, very important verse here. We have to live with the certainty that we are not living in a world that will suffer defeat by the enemies of God, but that the oppressed will eventually win through and achieve victory. But there's more verses. There's another important verse. Look at this verse here. Surah 23, verse 1. The believers must eventually win through. Qad aflahal mu'minun. Qad aflahal mu'minun. The promise is there. Those who endorse truth, who endorse justice, who endorse the supremacy and the majesty of Allah, God Almighty, must eventually uh, uh, be victorious, must prevail in the end. So what are we saying? If we can deduce from the Quran that the Mu'mineen, that there will be a global victory across those who oppose and who deny truth, then what can we assume? That there will be a grand confrontation. There will be a grand showdown. And it is in this grand showdown, in this global confrontation of truth and error, it is in this global war between good and evil that the concept of the Mahdi becomes and inescapable concept, the leader. Because there can be no global confrontation without a global organized force of the Mu'mineen. And when the Mu'mineen are organized at a global level, the concept of Al-Mahdi, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi, the supreme leader, the ultimate leader is inescapable. You cannot then but deduce from a rational perspective that if you envisage a grand confrontation between good, good and evil, a victory of those who are good, then you cannot but deduce that the Imam Al-Mahdi has to form part of that end game. And that is where I bring the corroboration of the Quran, the rational understanding of one nation, one mu'mineen, one group of mu'mineen confronting evil under one leader being a part of Islamic eschatology. And in that sense, one can then find corroboration of the hadiths. Let me summarize again because I want to keep this not that long. In the previous episode, I discussed with you and I showed to you the Quran that Imamun Mahdiyun, a guided Imam, is a reality from the Quran. The Quran makes that, creates that understanding, right? It is not just a reality, it is compulsory on us to identify Imamun Mahdiyun wherever we are. If there are three of you, you need to identify one of the three as, as Imamun Mahdiyun. If there's a country, you need to identify the leader that is Imamun Mahdiyun. When there are ten countries, they need Imamun Mahdiyun. Imam Mahdiyin. But when we are talking about coordinating and confronting evil at a global level, when we refer to the final battle, the great battle, in which all evil will be confronted and defeated, then we talk Al-Imam Al-Mahdi. Now we are not talking about Imam al Mahdi, we are talking about the Imam al Mahdi, the leader, the great leader. And I think 
that is, you know, the question that was raised, do you, Anwar, accept the idea of the Mahdi? Yes, based on purely Quran and a rational analysis of Quran, you cannot escape the idea of Mahdi, Imamun Mahdiun, a, a righteous leader, wherever you are, but also Al-Imam, Al-Mahdi, the leader that will arise. Yes, if we understand by occultation that that leader is not yet recognized, then I'm okay with that concept of occultation. If you want to believe that that man is born and is 1,100 years old already and he's in contact with some people, if you have the proofs, please send it to me. If you believe that somebody is already a Mahdi, he was born in the year 30, uh, three two hundred and eighty or after the prophet and he's now more than a thousand years old and he's you know what let me just address the problem with that concept you know if you say that the world cannot be left without a leader even for one minute or one second and that is why the mahdi has to be present i think it's a very cruel god that says you have a leader, but you can't, you don't have a contact address. You don't have a contact number. You know, today with Twitter, imagine how easy it would, it would be for that leader to give guidance. Because the, the shayateen are giving guidance. The a'immatu shar, the, the shaitan, the, the shaitanic imams are using all the technology to guide people. Why would Allah keep the righteous imam? somewhere in a bush, secret from people. I, I think it interferes with the concept of the justice of Allah, which is another core belief in the Mu'tazila um, rationalist school, and also the Zaidi and the Nasha, all the rationalist schools. So I cannot buy the idea that there is an Imam, but he is not accessible. He doesn't have an address, he doesn't have a contact number. And he, he appears to some people, but now those people would, they, they haven't said that he's appeared to them. So, I mean, there's nobody that can tell me that I've spoken to the Mahdi and he's alive and he's living in, you know, Samarra, somewhere in, in Iraq. So I can't, I need, there's no proof for me, unfortunately. The concept of Mahdi, I have to put it forward as the Imam that will arise endorsing those hadith the eschatology uh, you know islamic eschatology of the final confrontation i can even endorse the idea of occultation in a particular format where it means that they are a immat mahdiyin but they are unrecognized because people refuse to recognize them and so you have a country like saudi arabia might they might be a rightly guided imam somewhere in that country who is sitting in jail perhaps, you know, and that is a lot of the imma will be killed or will be jailed or will never ever become recognized and that is the curse of mankind on himself, not of Allah. Allah's favor is there for them and people choose to deny the favors of Allah. The, the imma of Allah are being denied. So I conclude on that point, my brothers and sisters, um, again, I say to you that uh, the concept of Imam un Mahdi, un a Mahdi is common, it is, it is a required concept from the Quran. The concept Al Mahdi is also if you deduce that there will be the final confrontation and the ultimate victory of good over evil, then you must, in that understanding, because how can you not have one leader but you have a global victory? You know, it's by, by means of inductive reasoning. Picture a world of Muslims that are divided between five different groups and different sects. How will they achieve victory? It's impossible. So if victory is going to take place of the Mu'minin, or all those who are righteous and endorse truth over the evil, there has to be one coordinating leader, one leader that will lead that battle. And that is the concept of Al-Mahdi, Al-Mahdi, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi, which we need to endorse with the corroboration of the Quran and rational thinking, which we need to corroborate.
the hadith that speak about the the, the final battle and the ultimate confrontation between Al Mahdi. Quickly bringing in the Dajjal, Al Masih uh, Dajjal. I'm not. I think we will do a separate chapter or separate dis separate discussion on that. But needless to say, if you are going to have one grand, grand war between righteousness and evil, I'm sure you will realize that evil also have to be have to have some master mind of a genius, some evil genius that will be there and that will use the tools of shaitan, which is trickery, deception, misleading people. Um, and those tools will be the tools in trade of the enemy side, the leadership of the enemy. And so we will have a separate discussion on that. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.